takes it upon himself to kill any of these men will be considered a friend of the state and shall be rewarded with the property and possessions these outlaws leave behind. It's the greatest crime in Roman law. my wife at her father's grandmother the soldiers are coming julia stay with her sulla is taking the city with his army he's made lists hundreds of people are on them are you no my wife's father is julia stay in the house don't go father where are you going to get your mother She's right, Sinner. You must leave now. Sinner! Hurry! Go. Please, Father. Go, hurry! to escape. Give me your name. It's Caesar, from the house of Julie. Arrest him. in any ruler's interest to keep peace among the people. And the people will only be at peace if they have a Senate representing them. Since when did the Senate ever represent the people? Okay, so why is your mouth hanging open? You have nothing to fear. You are not on my list. Sir, if I were on your list, and it were for the good of Rome, I would gladly die. Well, when you say that, 
I truly believe it to be true. So, I repeat, when did the Senate ever represent the people? I want the man with the humblest upbringing to answer me. <laughs> so it's me. I will answer you. You were all aristocrats. Your feet have never touched the ground, your ass has never touched a horse. How can you possibly represent the people whom most of you have never even met? We represent the people by preserving their traditions. If they think you want to be king... King? Did you say king? King? What would the name King buy me that I don't already have? Yeah, if the people know the Senate is still meeting to advise you. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, they will. That is uh, my fondest wish. So, I would not be a true Republican if I did not introduce a, how do I say it? A, um, earthier element among your ranks. Gentlemen. You will continue to advise me and you will continue to debate what is best for the people, but my men will Remain here just to make sure that the decisions that you reach are the proper ones. But, sir, is this not counter to Roman law? I have just changed Roman law. I understand, sir. But will something of the old ways be preserved? What Metallus means is not that we would ask you to pardon anyone whom you've resolved to destroy. Only that it might have a calming effect if you could make known whom you intend to spare. Oh, come, come, Cato. You know how alliances change in troubled times. Well, then, perhaps you can tell us who you intend to kill. <laughs> well, let's begin with you. I was only asking what everyone was thinking. Well, I can't possibly kill everyone. So I will kill only you. I may withdraw that. But then again, I may not. I will let you know after dinner. But for your sake, you better hope the food is good. Are you Julius Caesar? Yes. This way. you to Maria.
You have unfortunate ancestry. If you think it's unfortunate to be descended from the gods. <laughs> now, which god was that? The Julians are descended from Aeneas. Who was... The son of Venus. Ah, yes, 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 yes. I recall Marius making such claim. There are many people these days who claim to be descended from gods. Well, we have a crest which proves it. I believe you could have them fashioned in the marketplace for a couple of dinars. Why did you ask to see me? Your mother. She came to see me. Did she ask you to spare my life and what you agreed? Well, I promised that I would consider it. And I'm supposed to be grateful to you? No. She is. We're old friends. You've killed a lot of old friends. Oh, yes. True. True, true. Old friends in the day become fresh enemies at night. What do you want in exchange for my life? Why do you think I want anything in exchange? Men like you don't give things away for free. I'm not a man without compassion. I will help you if I can. First, you must understand the gravity of the crime. Senna was my greatest enemy, and you helped him to escape. Did he? <laughs> of course not. He did escape my soldiers, only to be killed by one of his servants. My wife. She's well. I leave women to their health. And since you are only the son of sinner by marriage, I intend to leave you to yours. If. If you divorce your wife. No. I refuse. You refuse to divorce your wife, even though it may cost you your life. My wife is my teacher. She's cleverer than I am. She's more honest than I am. She's a more compelling argument than I am, or you are, or your office is. I won't divorce her. That is my answer. Oh, Pompey. What do we do with men such as this? I don't know whether to... Embrace him or strangle him. I think we should let him go. What? His uncle Marius was my greatest enemy. He's got ten Mariuses inside him. Look at his eyes. Do you want to let him go? It's the ones who smile and flatter you should worry about. He speaks plainly. You do speak plainly, don't you? Always. So tell me. Would you kill me if you could? In an instant. Ha ha. <laughs> you can go. I said, you are free to go. Big heart that boy has. Bring it to me in the morning. Was this Sulla's plan to slaughter me outside so I wouldn't foul the carpet with my blood? I came to warn you. Why? 
Because if you don't leave Rome, I'll have to do as he asked. And? And I don't want to see men like you die young. What do you know about me? You refuse, Sulla. I'll tell you more someday, when this time. But now you must leave Rome. Your family will be safe. Here, take this. Go east to Bithynia. Show this ring to King Nicomedes. He'll keep you safe in his service. How do I know I can trust you? You don't. I will not hand my fate over to that man. So you'd let him kill you? And he can try if he wants. I am not leaving Rome. Why must you be so stubborn? Pompey himself came to offer you help. Why won't you accept it? He is Sulla's man. It could be a trick. Don't you trust anyone at all? Yes. I trust you. Then listen to me. You are not the heaven and the earth. You're just a man. And some things are bigger than you are. When you were in jail, I thought you were dead. I started to grieve your death. I'm asking you to spare me that season. How could I live with myself if I knew I had one chance to save your life and I failed? Pig for sale. How much will you give me for it? Ten dinars. Oh, that's good money for a swine. He requires carving. Julius Caesar. We will feed it to my dogs. coast of Crete. The ruler there used to make up laws and then hang them so high the people couldn't read them. And if they broke the law, he'd show them no mercy. Today the shores are infected by pirates. We need to anchor for the night. other side of the water. How long does it take to cross the water? Depends on the wind. Sometimes you can cross it in days. Sometimes if the air is still, you may not move at all.
You don't like the ropes, huh? We can use nails. That's the Roman way, isn't it? What kind of ransom do you get for a Roman these days? Two talents. But I'd pay three to watch a Roman drown. You'd get 50 for me alive. And who would collect it? They would. If your men don't return before dawn, you die. Your time is up, Roman. I'll fight one of you for another day. Nobody's coming back for this, Roman. Throw him in the sea. Fifty talents. And the money just happened to find its way into your purse. Sir, I never sold a coin from you. And I suppose it was the goldsmiths who just happened to rob me again. Sir, they've been convicted for me. I know how these things work. You share the profits with these men. You pay me well. I would never risk my life for a gold coin. This is the magistrate's testament. The goldsmiths have confessed. Flavius had nothing to do with it. Are you trying to tell me that a man who handles so much gold never put a piece into his pocket? <laughs> He's been proven innocent. This needs your signet. Strangle him? Wait. Hmm? He's been proven innocent. Well, I just disapprove of the verdict. So long. He's a good man. And he's here on my introduction. Allow me to vouch for him and to protect him. You can vouch for him all you like. But protect him, you can't. The penalty for theft is strangulation. Strangulation. That would be an error of judgment. My judgment? Oh. 
Lambert. You're becoming very critical. You want to rise above me. You're just waiting for your chance. Most men worship the rising sun and not the setting sun. That's how the saying goes, isn't it? But I am not the setting sun, not yet. And in the meantime, I expect you to subordinate yourself to my wishes, whether you understand them or not. Strangle him. Now. You. You will strangle him. Did you hear him say no? Oh, my dear General, I asked you to strangle Flavius, and strangle Flavius you will, and you will do it with your own bare hands. You will strangle Flavius, or you yourself be strangled. Strangle him! Strangle him now! I will not have my orders to submit! I swear to... Such as yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, sir. This young girl, new from the north, will have special ways of delighting their masters, and young enough for you to teach her a few of your own. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 sir. He's uh, hardly able to lift a bucket of wine unassisted. He'll disagree with everything you say. He's unfortunately skilled in the arts of the tongue. In what arts of the tongue are you versed? In the arts of Euclid and Aristotle. The arts of verse. I can recite much of Homer from memory and all of Pindar. The arts of politics and the state. Logic, metaphysics, epistemology, rhetoric and sophistry. Sophistry? Now, doesn't that mean you know how to tell fancy lies? There's great power in ambiguity, sir. But not all men use advantages to wicked ends. Are you experienced teaching the young? Yes. I much prefer it to teaching the old. Why is that? Because they exhibit more wisdom.
father. Who are your friends? Portia and Marcus. Don't you remember them? Of course, Cato's children. Just all grown so much. That's our cousin. Brutus. What are you reading? Ethics. Aristotle. My Uncle Cato gave it to me. How is he? He's as grumpy as ever. Hasn't changed a bit. Mother. <laughs> <laughs> Father, did you bring me anything back from the East? Did I bring you back anything? Yes. I brought you this. Apollonius, this is my daughter, Julia. Apollonius will be your teacher. Where's my wife? Caesar. Don't get up. I'm not ill. You don't have to get dressed. Let's lie down together. No, we'll eat. Let me just... <laughs> Cornelia. I almost stopped waiting for you. I almost stopped missing you. And now... Yeah. This was not supposed to happen. of you who worked with Sulla, and those of you who worked against him. But not all who worked with him agreed with his laws. I therefore propose that the rights of the tribunes be restored, so that once again the people can be fairly represented. I propose a thorough reform of the courts and an unqualified reinstatement of the Senate as the principal body of government. See you fresh for another victory. Huh. Oh, he lets me win. He makes me feel old. I'm glad to see you made it back safely. I hear you met with a number of obstacles. Yes. Fortunately, your friend Nicomedes has proven to be a great ally. I never had a chance to thank you for saving my life. You defied Sulla. He told you to divorce your wife, and you said no, even though you knew it meant certain death. That impressed me. And it reminded me of something. You see, my friend, Sulla once told me to divorce my wife. And unlike you, I obeyed him. I left the one woman I loved. Life is full of lessons. So. We've taught each other a thing or two. Tell me how to get where you are now. Don't tell me I was wrong to hope you were spared. See, I have something to give to Rome. But I have no voice. If you want a voice in Rome, win the people. Speak from your heart. And when you make a promise, keep it. Pompey, I promise you, if you ever need my help, 
Just give me a sign, and I'll come to your aid. Man. Andros. Mm -hmm. Woman. Grin. Mm -hmm. Slave. From memory. Why do I have to learn Greek? Because it is the greatest culture the world has ever known. Better than Rome? Much. So is a Greek slave better than a Roman free man? <laughs> I'm content to be what I am. You can draw your own conclusions from that. But you'd rather be free? Well, all men would rather be free. Because then you could do what you wanted. I can do what I want to do, even as a slave. And some men who think they are free are not free at all. They are bound by their own poor ideas. But if you're my slave, I would set you free. <laughs> Juliet. Father. If I'd set him free, I'd have no one to educate you. He could educate me just the same if he was free. Oh, yes, but then I couldn't afford him. <laughs> Sweet gods, come quick. Cornelia. 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 Cornelia, wake up. Oh, please, stay with me. No. Cornelia, please. Oh, God. My name is Julius Caesar. I'm here to honor my wife, Cornelia, publicly and for the last time. She was a good woman. She gave no thought to her own well-being, only to the well-being of others. Rome was her first and greatest love. We shared that love. We dreamt of a Rome without dictators, where sons never raised their hands against fathers, where brothers never raised their swords against brothers, where Romans lived at peace with their fellow Romans by their sides. So I ask you now to join with me in honoring not only the memory of my good wife, but the memory of all good men and women who have died fighting for a better Rome. People of Rome, I, Julius Caesar, make you this promise on the body of my beloved wife. I will not rest until the Rome she dreamed of is the Rome we live in. Join me, for I am not only the nephew to our beloved Marius, who fought against the evils of Sulla until Sulla took his life from him, but I am also a son of the Julians, who was descended from the goddess Venus herself. I offer you my hand a power supreme among mortal men, granted by the gods, superior to kings. Let us work together, comrades, in our quest for an empire that is boundless, united, and free! We'll have to watch him. We'll use him. Good morning to you, Caesar. Good Good morning. Morning. Hail, Caesar. Hail, Caesar. Hail, Caesar. Good morning to you. Ah, greeting Caesar. Hey, Julia, I have something for you. Mm, now then, uh, hey, just, ah, here. And I hope it will make you smile. Hmm? <laughs> That's the first I've seen you smile in weeks. What happened? The price of bread is tripled. There is no grain in Rome. 
Why? Because the grain supply from Egypt was cut off by pirates. Half Rome is without bread. The city is close to panic. Only the very rich can afford bread. We must fight the pirates now or Rome will be crippled forever. So I propose that Pompey be given legions to attack this problem once and for all. It's not a question of whether or not we fight pirates. It's a matter of how. I propose we equip ten small armies to fight the pirates at different parts of the coast. But the pirates can destroy Rome one troop at a time. The pirates are a bunch of uneducated hoodlums. I hardly think they could withstand a Roman assault of any size. Let's talk about the way things are, gentlemen. Not about the way we'd like them to be. I can attest to the threat caused by these scavengers. I was a victim of one of their assaults myself. Then perhaps you'll regale us with your sea stories, guys, Julius, in the tavern after the work of the Senate is done. <laughs> the work of the Senate is rarely done. You see, there are not thousands of pirates in our waters, but hundreds of thousands. And not all are rogue bands preying on single vessels. There are pirate admirals, sea kings, with thousands of ships and troops more skilled in naval combat even than our own. Pretty speeches like this won't even cook our lunch. No, speeches do as little work as the Senate. How dare this arrogant newcomer insult this august body? August and plump, bibulous like your own body. Fat from idle chatter and inactivity. Enough, enough, enough! We have a man in our company who can resolve this conflict with the pirates. But do we honor him with that duty? No. I'm with Caesar. We have no bread. Now, are we a great empire, or are we going to be ruled by outlaws? To perform this commission, Pompey will have to be given an army twice the size of the one Sully used to take Rome. Have we learned nothing from the past? I see. Rome should go hungry because Cato can't find a single man he can trust. Not every man with an army would take the state. Not every man is a solar. Some men are ruled by circumstance, but men of character bend circumstances to their will. They make nature behave in such a way that their will is carried out on this earth. They defy the elements, and sometimes even defy their own baser nature in order to see that their ideals come alive before their eyes. Pompey is such a man. Those of you who have lived know that one thing alone keeps a nation small. Civil strife. Tribes fighting tribes rather than banding together in one arm of power. As long as we fight in this room, seeking personal victories, enacting petty revenges, Rome will stay small. Suppose we put our opinions aside and let one feeling rule us for a time. The love of Rome. I propose we put our strengths together to become a force the world has never seen. I propose we let a man, a single man, lead us out of the dark. I propose Pompey. All those in favor. Can we come inside? You said we could. Why? There's nothing but a bunch of dusty old senators in here. Is the consul in there? Yes, this is Consul Nias Pompey. And who is this? This is my daughter, Julia. And Apollonius. The wisdom of our household. Well, Julia, your father has just proved to us he'll have my job one day. But don't think it's all fun. Why? Because he'll always have these men around him. They're silly looking, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you when I return. In triumph.
Apollonia says that when we die, our soul goes to a place where everything is perfect. All the beds are perfect beds. All the circles are perfectly round. Julia, how beautiful she looks. Beautiful. Do you like it? All dressed for Pompey's triumph. <laughs> Has Apollonius returned? I wanted to talk to him about Plato. No, he hasn't returned. I'll bet he ran off to fight with the rebel slaves. Those rebel slaves are not like Apollonius. They aren't educated men with happy homes. Well, we had a Moorish cook who ran off a month ago. We heard he joined some rebels and that he was made commander. From cook to commander, it's so inspiring. You talk as if it's a game. I don't. Think about it. At least half of the population of Rome is made up of slaves. And what would happen if they all decided to rebel? It would be the end of Rome. Rome had to act. What do you mean? Pompey. He defeated 20,000 of them on his way back to Rome. Well, who's going with me? None of you wants to join the Council of Rome. Hmm? No offense, Father, but do you really think we're going to trail along with your lictors around? Rome's greatest general returns, and we want to be free to run and run, follow yes, him. Run, yes, run, run. Go enjoy yourselves. Come on. Thank you, Consul. <laughs> Brutus, aren't you going with them? I wanted to return this to Apollonius. What is this? Ah, yes, Plato's and all. Mm. Did you read it? Yes. Then? And Plato thinks that democracy is doomed to failure. He thinks that a state should be run by a dictator. A dictator who's become enlightened through experience and learning. I don't think Plato would get along very well with your uncle Cato. Plato! <laughs> Come on! Come on! Hurry and catch up with your friends who'll have to come along with me. See you at the ceremony. Hurry up! Goodbye, Father! I'm ready.
Thank you for your kindness. Let me take care of my son now. Slaves, rebellious slaves. such favor. I am Julia, daughter of Gaius Julius Caesar, your fellow consul. A consul's daughter? Didn't you know that those who choose to fight against Rome are Rome's enemies and will be crucified tomorrow? Polonius was my teacher, not an enemy of Rome. Everything good and decent I have ever learned has been taught to me by him. You must spare him for my sake. Consider your wish granted. Take her to the holding pens and release this slave Apollonius into the custody of his lawful owners. Yes, sir. Thank you, Consul. Thank you. Take you home. I'm not coming with you. I shall stay here. They will crucify you. You have grown into a fine woman, intelligent, full of everything that makes the Romans great. But I am not a Roman, Julia. I am a slave. You are not a slave any longer. You are free. I am freeing you now. Freedom is not something you can be given. It's something you have to take. I should have done it earlier. You could have been free years ago. I should have asked my father. He would have granted it. But I never thought it would make a difference. It felt as though you were free. I thought you were happy. I was. But it's not happiness I'm seeking. Something else. What? Dignity. You have been good to me. You have been my family. But they are my family now. We both know where we belong. And I belong in there, with them. One day you'll understand, my dear Julia. Goodbye.
past. Something happened to me there. It's an affliction, no more, no less. Your grandfather suffered the same spells and lived into old age. I mean something else. Before it happened, I was watching Pompey. And he's been a friend to me. And we speak together easily, like brothers. Yet we couldn't be more different. He's a great army leader. His provinces make him the richest and most powerful man in Rome. Your father wanted you to be a statesman, and now you're a consul of Rome. That would have been beyond his dreams. I need an army. To turn yourself into a Pompey? How would you pay and feed such an army? Your consulship already cost a fortune. Yes, I am consul, and I am broke. The attack today was stronger than usual. There was something else, Mother. This attack was different in other ways. How? I saw something. I saw something at that moment. Not just about myself. But about the whole of humankind. How we keep ourselves small. And I realized I have not been inspired. And as I watched Pompey, I saw that he was not inspired. And he would never be inspired. And I realized the difference between Pompey and me. Pompey has merely done something. But I am for something. I need legions. Pompey has them. He will lend them to me. Why would Pompey do that, diminishing his own power? What could you offer him in return that equals the value of an army? Sorry for what happened to Apollonius. I felt great affection for him as well. He's a believer, as I am, the old ways. We trust in the wisdom of our forefathers and in their laws. And I, Cato, trust in him. Cato, you flatter me. But let us give credit to another man. For I could not have fought a war across the sea without knowledge that Rome was in safe hands here at home. And for that, we owe a debt of gratitude to my friend and fellow consul, Gaius Julius Caesar. Hey, hey, Caesar! This is my daughter, Julia. Yes, I know, we've met. It would honor my house if you would give us a recitation. What in front of so many people? You've done it in larger groups than this. Father, I assure you that I'm not prepared for it. Ah. Come. Come. The daughter of Caesar will recite for us. Tonight, stand beside me and praise with me, a man dear to me and to the gods, mightier in victory than the kings of Mycenae, with their golden-haired horses, and stronger for more than the battle ghosts that ride the shores of Troy. Hear me, sons of bold-headed men. Hear me sing the victory of a man dear to me and to the gods.
There's really nothing. No, it's not your fault. I'm not sure whose fault it is, but I assure you I will find out and he will be punished severely. <laughs> Thank you, Counselor. You're very kind. What's your name? Calpurnia. From which house? Lucius Piso. I'm sorry for staring. I thought perhaps we'd met somewhere before. Would you like to eat together? I'd be delighted. What hour do you call this? I think it's known as the fifth hour. Yes, the sun is coming up. You're right. I was out with him. We drank and ate and had entertainment. He cares for me. Oh, yes, he's twice your age. And your friend, remember? Yes, he is my friend. I just want to know if he treats you with respect. I like him. I do. I don't love him, not yet, but that may come. Why are you behaving in such a manner? He's consul. He's the first man in Rome. He has legions. The price is high. Price. It's customary for the father to offer a dowry. You know I have nothing to give you. <coughs> I accept. I want a commission. <coughs> Gaul. Gaul? It's taken. <coughs> By Cassius. I need a victory in battle. You're not experienced enough in warfare, and you need legions! Your legions. <laughs> She's all I've got. I want 50,000 for her. Talents. Soldiers. to take my commission away. Because I think Caesar's the right man for Gaul. But I've already put myself to considerable expense preparing my man. And you'll be reimbursed. What? And I'll propose that you look after the garrison. The garrison? This won't do, Pompey. You didn't even put this before the Senate. You exercise Let's not discretion. talk business at my wedding. It may tempt bad luck. confession to make. What's so. We did meet before. Or rather, I met you, but you didn't meet me. It was a pompous triumph. You fell. Nobody saw it but me. I held you to make sure you didn't hurt yourself. Thank you. It shames me. I never know when it's going to happen. Many people believe that 
Those who have the condition are holy, blessed by the gods. Perhaps. What do you suppose a child with both of our faces blended together would look like? I think uh, it would look rather beautiful. Do you? Is it something you'd like to find out? Yes. Are you sure? I am less sure about my own name than I am about this. I am terrible around the house. We have servants. I'm not one for parties. I go to bed early. I'll follow you. Mm. Caesar. You must make me a promise. Anything you like. Come back from this war alive. I promise you. And hurry. It's two promises. I'm winning. <laughs> well, that's three <laughs> promises. <laughs> now it is your turn to promise me one thing. Mm. Will you marry me before I leave? How many dead? In the region of 23,000 Celts. And Romans? 112. I've had them prepared for burial back in Rome. We're not returning to Rome. We're going further north. There's a lot more of Rome out there. It just isn't called Rome yet. They're on attack, Harry! must tell Caesar to retreat. What I gave to Caesar, I will not revoke. Down your blades. Why have you come here? This land is ours. You have no right to be here. What is your name? Vercingetorix. You stayed to fight alone. This is my house. I've built it with my own hands. If you'll burn it down. You're free to go.
Give me a horse. You heard him. Give him a horse. People speak of you with admiration. Some call you the great, as they called Pompey. In the market, people sometimes bow to me as I pass. It will also delight you to know that a marriage that began as an advantage has blossomed into romance. Watching Julia and Pompey together delights me and saddens me that you're not here. No one could be prouder to be your wife, Caesar. But after so long without you, I fear I'm getting used to my solitude. Come home soon, my darling. Until then, I will be waiting. Caesar has killed 300,000 Celts. He attacked peaceful villages. Villages who pay taxes to the Roman state. It's beyond toleration! This is how you think a great Roman general? Caesar sent 100,000 slaves back to Rome. Are you saying you haven't taken any of them? Oh, if they hadn't come from him, I would have got them from somewhere else. <laughs> Pompey, you have to be wary. He's been away three years fighting with your legions. He's doubled their salary. They are totally devoted to him. My lords, as Cicero has put it so well, strain every nerve for the preservation of the state. Look in every quarter for the storms. They will burst upon you if you do not see them in time. Remember who he is? What are you talking about? That man! Mark Antony? Yes! Running from his debtors in Rome to find wealth in the province. Like all of us. Hey, not me! I still fight for the glory of Rome! Ah! Attacked. By who? Gallic tribesmen. 14,000 dead. 14,000? And many more wounded. They've united under one leader. His name is Vercingetorix. Where can we find him? In Malaysia. How long is the march? Eight days. Vercingetorix is in there with 18,000 of his men. It's the most invincible stronghold in Gaul. We'll never break it. Well, we won't have to break it. We'll build a wall around their city. We'll trap them inside and starve them. Nobody's ever built a fortification of that length. Then we will be the first. Let's not waste time. brings you to Pisa. I've come to speak with you. 
Your absence in Rome has been criticized. As you can see, my wife needs me here. Could we speak privately? What's the matter, Cato? Did your conversation depend on speaking ill of my father? Sit, sit, Cato. Thank you. Caesar is about to take the last stronghold in Gaul. Person Gatorix has called forth every tribe from the mountains to the sea. They're on the move to Elysia. How many men? 250,000. And my husband? 40,000. He, he will survive. He has survived these many years. He's never been up against so much. Is this true? Will my husband lose this time? Oh, no one knows the outcome of war. Your consul, Pompey, do something. If Caesar wins this battle... He will become the next Sulla. That's what you were going to say, wasn't it? That if he wins, he will become the next Sulla. Why are you worried, Cato? You said he doesn't stand a chance against the Gauls. Why call him back? Why not just leave him there to fight this battle to his own death? If you leave him there, your next Sulla will extinguish himself. You're waiting for my husband to fail, aren't you? And so are you. My dear Calpurnia, I'm doing everything in my power to make sure I come home safely to you. You must have heard we've built a wall to hold the Elysians in. What you may not know is that we've built a second wall as well, to keep their allies out. I say this to reassure you. They can round up ten times our number and still we will defeat them. Because it's not numbers, but vision that wins wars. My vision is of returning to you, my love. And not just returning, but returning victorious, as I've promised you. When my men are tired, I can't always let them rest. When they're hungry, I can't always feed them. But when they forget their vision, I can share mine with them. And the more that I share, the more of it I have. It'll take 30 days to round up the tribes. How much food have we got? 27 days of grain. We'll make it last 35. We will divide rations. Have all the grain brought to the stores. On penalty of death, no one will eat beyond their measure. And the tribesmen come from the countryside to fight with us. The Gauls would outnumber the Romans five to one. If we succeed, we could destroy the Roman presence in Gaul forever. If we fail, we'll be their slaves. In the evening, we take our leisure, tell stories about the city and our families, or just eat in silence after our hard day's work. The men do work hard. But there are worse things than hard labor. Waiting is much worse. Waiting is the hardest part of war, my dear wife. Most of our men would welcome the cry of battle over this dreaded silence. And would fight an enemy we could see, however great, sooner than fight the one in our minds which goes on killing forever. The real enemy is almost a comfort, I sometimes think as I look up the hill to Elysia. They're just like us. They have courage like us. They're dying like us. The tribe should have been here by now. If they don't come, we'll have to fight on our own. We don't have enough men. I say we give ourselves up. And be Roman slaves? If we die, our gods die. 
At least if we live. In slavery? In any state. If we live, we can perform that service to the gods. We can keep them living for our children. You think the gods would want us to keep them alive so they can be worshipped by slaves? If we have nothing left to feed ourselves with, I say we do what our ancestors did. We eat the elderly and the infirm to keep ourselves alive. We won't eat our own people. There's enough food left for several days. If we only feed our men. There's a way we can compromise the Romans, weaken them. I say, we give up our women and children to them. Our rations will keep us alive for several more days. If our women and children become their slaves, the Romans will have to feed them, and that'll deplete their supplies. We must bid farewell to our families. We must do it today. And whatever happens, we must lock the gates behind them forever. Our survival depends upon it. This will be our sacrifice to the gods.